Kazan Clark is first up and she has brought an amazing assortment of gorgeous projects. Hi. Hi. So tell me a little bit about the mason jars, right? That's where we're starting. The mason jars is something that's really easy to accomplish with making basic embellishments and it just takes it from a normal mason jar to something really gorgeous. That's great, and it's nice and easy. It's perfect for a wedding or something. So oh my you gosh, said, we're yes. going to start with the flower embellishment. That's right. So what I've done was I started off by just wrapping the twine around the mason jar and just securing it with some hot glue, and then you're good to go. So that part's done. And then I'm going to embellish them with some flowers that I'm using die cuts for. So I'm going to start off with my two flower shapes like that, and I'm just going to lay my cardstock over, and then I'm also going to cut out the little leaf shape, so put that cardstock over. I love that the plate is big enough that you can cut both at the same time, different papers, the whole thing. Exactly, and you, ex different colors. So this makes that whole project go so much quicker, especially if you were doing um, things like wedding favors or things like that. Oh yeah, of were course. You doing multiple? These would be beautiful on a table, at a wedding, I can see a baby shower, some sort of Easter celebration or anything springy. I don't know why the twine and the flower feels like spring to me. Um, I love the natural look of that and just makes it look all pretty and natural. So I'm just going to run this through the machine. And it's easy enough to do. You've created that sandwich and you are uh, ready to go. It, Ooh, so nice. and I can already see the cuts. It's so exciting. I, I always feel like it's magic, the big reveal. You open it up and then <laughs> there it is. So I've cut the flowers out. And right. typically I would want to emboss these, but I'm gonna save that for a, a step in just a second. Okay, So I'm gonna just I put will this, take this away for you. Thank you, just put this aside for one second. However, I would like to go ahead and emboss this leaf shape straight okay. away. So I'm gonna go ahead and just apply my embossing mat over like that. So we're making a different kind of sandwich now. This is the embossing sandwich, exactly. I always think of embossing as a kind of thing where you have all these sandwich materials and then you make your own sandwich depending on what you want to eat that day. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way, of, I do it too. <laughs> That's a great way of looking at it. I've only got um, dies situated at the very end of my plate, so I'm just going to run it back. It's not necessary to run it all the way through, and that saves time too. Well, hey, I'm kind of a lazy crafter, so I really like that tip. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this, and if I flip this over, oh, we can see the yeah. beautiful embossed edge It's got there. that gorgeous raised edge. So nice. It adds that little detail to it, which just takes it from a plain leaf to a fab leaf. Oh my gosh, and I would definitely say, looking at your projects, it's those details that make the difference. Uh, it does make a big difference. So now, Julie, I'm going to use the dye as a stencil. So once again, don't take the paper out. Wow. You're going to literally stencil through the dye. Oh my gosh, so, what a good idea. And I found this little thingy the other day. Isn't it amazing? Finger sponge. I love it. Just dip it in like that, and you're just going to go and stencil right through. Sort of stippling brush style. Mm -hmm. So can you brush it or tap it? Are there any rules about it, this? This is crafting. There's definitely no rules. <laughs> I like to stipple. Okay. This is my little technique. But I mean, brushing or stamping is all good. And then when I pop this leaf out, like that, I've got that beautiful dimension. So, wait a second. So we've cut it, we've embossed it so that it's raised, and then we've also inked it and all in the and space of minutes with one dye. With That's one so dye. awesome. And what's nice is sometimes you're going to want to just do the cutting. Other times you want to add just the embossing. So this gives you lots of options to really make your project your own. Oh yeah, unique. it's like that sandwich metaphor. You get to eat whatever it is that I you want. I love that metaphor. I'm going to use that one. So this is, I've gone ahead and embossed this with the actual dye. Now, let's, if I go back to my flowers, I'm going to use an embossing folder to create a whole different embossed look. That's so, so cool. So many different choices and ways that you can do it. And I know I have one here that's already cut of the smaller one for correct. you. Correct. Thank you. I try to be a helpful assistant. You're amazing. I love you. <laughs> so this is a 3D embossing folder. So beautiful. It's really going to pop those embossed edges out. So I'm just going to position that in there like that. So you can get fussy and pick exactly where you wanted to put it if you wanted a particular part of the design, or you can just trust fate and serendipity. I've done that many times. I'm like, well, I wonder what this is going to look like. <laughs> I've chosen these areas over here just because I really like the detail of the flourishes and the swirls, but that's equally pretty too. And that's, again, your personal 
personal choice of where you'd like what you'd like to do. And if you were making favors or something, you could fill the whole folder with it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Really easy. I love it. It's speedy, speedy crafting. And now we're back to sandwiching again. This is a different sandwich, though. Oh. So I'm going to start off with my raspberry plate, mm -hmm. or also known as raspberry. I'm going to work <laughs> on the accent. Start off on my I raspberry. Love your accents. Thank you. And then put my folder on top of that, and then I'm going to be using my embossing mat. So, but I'm not using my embossing tan mat. Small embossing mm -hmm. tan mat, okay. So once again, run this sandwich through the machine. And of course, if you're confused about any of this, the instructions will be on the Scrapbook Soup website. Yes. So we're we rolling it through, having mm -hmm. a rolling good time while we're doing and it. And it's an easy roll. It's not a difficult roll at all. It is. There we go. And now it's time the big reveal. for the big reveal. Ta-da! There we go. Oh, oh gosh. my gosh. <laughs> They're so beautiful. It is so deep. Look at it that. It is. It is. It, I actually, for a second, I thought it was molded plastic or something when I, you brought your projects in because it's so deep. And now we can even enhance those embossed areas by inking those edges again. So you can take your little dobler or and just do the same, same thing over again with the inking. That is very cool. And you cool. can just catch those areas. Oh, you don't even need the dabbing tool. You can just go well, direct. But if we want to play with it, because I love playing with it so much. I like tools. I know, me too. I love it too. That's so. very cool. And I know that you said that on the, um, you showed actually, you have one here, right? That's on the finished one. I do. You said you were going to show us exactly how to curl those petals so that it looks so dimensional. You know what the trick is in the cardstock? If you've got a nice, sturdy cardstock, it, there's no magic involved. All I do is I take my fingers and I gently work it like this. You know what's funny is I up. actually always think that sweaty palms when you're working with paper are kind of helpful because it like moistens the paper as you're doing it. Yeah, I never thought about that, but maybe you're right. So it's very, very easy, mm -hmm. and this cardstock allows me to do that. And I've done it with regular paper as well, so it's not that you need fancy cardstock, but it's not a difficult technique. And I love that this flower has a hole in the center because you can easily put a brad through it that has a shiny top like this, a nail head, whatever you need to do. And then simply take it once you've assembled the whole thing and pop it on the front of your project like that, and it's done. Now you told me that, of course, we're not only limited to flowers with this technique because the entire beautiful coterie of projects that you have here are done, again, with this whole thing of choose your own. You can cut it, you can emboss it, you can stencil it, you can do whatever you want. And I particularly have to say this banner. Oh my gosh, isn't that beautiful? Oh my gosh. I love the colors on that. And that's using the embossing folder as well with some journey glaze. It's really, really nice. I love it a lot. And how about the drawer fronts? Because you said there was something that you did there to enhance it that wasn't inking, right? Correct. In fact, there is no inking on that. So when we look at this, it's the same technique that we did with the embossing of the flowers. This is how the paper started out. Plain blue cardstock, we've all got that. And it's even like a scrap hanging around. Correct. Then I went ahead and embossed it. So this is without any die cutting first, we went ahead and embossed no, it. No, because it's just, a, it's just an embossing folder. But isn't it lovely? Look how gorgeous those so details beautiful. are. So many great ideas for taking your scrapbooking supplies off the page. Thank you so much.